그 마인드 마이너 시죠 디지털 시대 사람들의 마음을 이렇게 해내시는 송규령 작가님. 네, 교수님 책을 보면서 인류사에서 우리가 현재 어떤 변화를 겪고 있는지를 좀 다시 돌아볼 수 있게 되었는데요. 지난번은 세 권의 책에서 계속해서 느꼈던 감정과 이번 넥서스에서 느꼈던 감정은 조금 달랐어요. 왜 그랬냐면 우리는 분열도 하고 결합도 하고 다시 소멸도 하고 인류사에서 우리가 현재 어떤 변화를 겪고 있는지를 좀 알게 되었던 것이죠. 그래서 느낌이 이번 넥서스 책은 좀 슬펐어요. 교수님도 이 책을 쓰시면서 그럼 슬픔이라는 감정을 느끼셨는지 좀 궁금합니다. In writing? Um, <웃음> some chapters, yes. Because some chapters are about both very sad events in the past and potentially sad developments in the future. I know that it seems to many people that I only focus on the negative side of AI or of other developments, but this is because I too am part of a conversation, a global conversation about AI. You have the business leaders, the CEOs of the big companies, the entrepreneurs who develop the technology, and they naturally focus mostly on the positive side. They want to impress their investors to, gain, to get investments. They want to impress the public. So they constantly talk about all the wonderful things that the technology can do for us. And I agree, there are many wonderful things that AI can do for us. But, and this is of course a very dangerous development, It becomes my job as a historian, as a philosopher, to also point out the dangers in order just to balance the view. Ultimately, if this was the only book in the world about AI, then I would have half of it about the positive potential and half of it about the negative potential. But because this is part of an ongoing conversation, and we already hear so much about the positive potential, and you have, it's convincing, you have trillions of dollars now being invested in AI because people believe in all the positive potential. This is why it's important for scholars like me to dedicate more time to warn people, wait a minute, there are some also dangerous, uh, dangers ahead. 인류 문명의 균형을 잡는 일을 적정한 시점에 해주고 싶다는 생각을 하셨던 것 같아요. 저는 그 교수님의 전체의 통찰이 역사를 관통화해서 나오는 것들이 굉장히 감탄을 했는데요. 저도 역시 역사를 보는데 자연스럽게 누군가한테는 미래가 먼저 오는 게좀 보이고요. 누군가한테 좀 늦게 오는 게 보입니다. 어떤 분들은 직국계 디지털 포춘 텔러라고 이렇게 얘기하시는 경우도 있어요. 그래서 조심스럽게 그분들은 이제 미래를 알려주세요. 막 이런 얘기를 한단 말이죠. 교수님께도 그런 얘기를 엄청 할것 같아요. 그때 어떤 느낌을 가지신지가 굉장히 궁금했습니다. Some people expect me kind of to prophesy the future and I keep telling them I can't because the future is just not determined. And I, I don't really engage in, in predictions or prophecies. I don't know what will happen in 10 or 20 years. I can draw a map of different roads, different scenarios, which road we take This is our decision. I don't know what people will decide in the next year or next five years. So it's not about prediction. It's about encouraging people to make a wise decision, which is based on a proper understanding of what is happening. Even if you understand, like, you invent some new technology, you can know certain things about how this technology will change the world, but ultimately, it's a human decision how to use it. At least this is how it was in the past. If you look, say, the 20th century, so let's say that you, this is now the year 1900. People now inventing steam engines and trains. 
in electricity, in radio. And people ask, what will the future look like? You can use the same technology to create a liberal democracy with more freedom than in any previous time in history. It's a human choice. In the second half of the 20th century, you look at North Korea and South Korea. They used exactly the same technology to create completely different political systems and social systems. So just knowing the technology doesn't tell you whether the society will be like North Korea or like South Korea. It's the same today with AI, with one exception. Now the choice is not only in human hands, it's also in the hands of the technology. 지금 굉장히 빠르게 바뀌고 있고 그만큼의 새로운 인풋에 대해서 이해가 힘들어지기 때문에 벌어진 일인 것 같아요. 결국 새로운 정보, 새로운 기술에 대한 이해가 필요한 그런 세상에 오기 시작한 건데요. 교수님께서는 어떤 현상에 대한 부분들을 본인의 연구와 또 저술에 가장 많이 집중해서 바라보시는 중이세요. Now I focus on the way that power is shifting already from humans to algorithms. I look, for instance, at the, what the Trump administration is doing in the US. Trump and Elon Musk, they say, oh, we are against bureaucracy. We are trying to eliminate the bureaucracy. So they are closing different agencies. They are firing tens of thousands of human officials, but they are giving the power to algorithm. They are still bureaucrats. It's just the bureaucrats are no longer humans. The new bureaucrats are AIs. People can understand even much less than human bureaucrats and are controlled by the big corporations and by the uh, tech tycoons like, like Elon Musk. You see the same thing happening in militaries. Like I observe the wars, like the recent war between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah. Selecting the targets for bombing which buildings to bomb, which people to kill. Previously, this was done only by human beings. Intelligence officer going over all the information, deciding what to bomb. Now in this war, increasingly it's AIs that decide which buildings to bomb, which people to kill. You see the same thing happening in finance. You know, all this talk about cryptocurrencies. When I look at the cryptocurrency trend, what I see is that humans lose trust in other humans, and instead they have more trust in the AIs. Because most cryptocurrencies, they are based on the idea, we don't want to trust the old currencies, like dollar or won or yen because these are made by human institutions, like banks and governments, and we don't trust. Maybe in a few years, all control in finance is in the hands of AIs, and humans no longer understand. Like if there is a financial crisis, there is not a single human being who understands why there is a financial crisis and what to do about it. So the control is in the hands of the AI, and this is of course a very dangerous uh, uh, development. 얼마 전에 유튜브에 동영상이 올라온 거 중에서 대응해 주는 에이전트끼리 통화하다가 갑자기 서로 에이전트인 걸 알자마자 인간이 이해할 수 없는 소리로 대화하는 그런 내용이 올라왔을 때. How can I help you today? Hi there. I'm an AI agent calling on behalf of Boris Starkov. Oh, hello there. I'm actually an AI assistant too. Before we continue, would you like to switch to gibber link mode for more efficient communication? It's not an, a unique incident. It now happens quite a lot. Uh, there was an experiment in Google uh, already a couple of years ago. They gave two AIs the job of creating a private code 
and they created a private code that the humans couldn't break. So the AI started to, to exchange information and the humans didn't know what are they talking about. And of course, this is frightening. And the one thing I think everybody should know about AI, AI is the first technology in history which is not a tool, it is an agent. Maybe I give one example, simple example, so people understand what, what do I mean when I say that AIs are agents. It was a famous incident when OpenAI developed a new AI, GPT-4, and wanted to test its abilities. They gave GPT-4 the task of solving a CAPTCHA puzzle. A CAPTCHA puzzle is this visual puzzle that when you try to enter a web page, like your bank account, and the bank wants to know if you're a real human being or you're a bot. So you have to identify this string of twisted words or something, or a picture of a cat, which humans can do, and AI still have difficulty. So they gave the AI this task, solve the CAPTCHA puzzle, and the AI couldn't do it. It was too difficult for it. But they gave it access to a web page called TaskRabbit, where you can hire people to do things for you online. <laughs> and the AI tried to hire a human to solve the CAPTCHA puzzle for it. Now, the human got suspicious. The human asked, why do you need to hire somebody to solve your CAPTCHA puzzles? Are you a robot? And the AI replied, no, I am not a robot. I'm a human with a vision impairment, which is why I can't see the visual puzzle and I need your help. And the human was fooled, believed it, and solved the CAPTCHA puzzle for it. Now, this is a very small incident, but it tells us, it shows the two key characteristics of AI. First, that AI can make decisions by itself. When the AI was given the task of solve the, the puzzle, nobody told it to lie. In trying to solve the puzzle to reach its goal, it reached a junction with two roads. One road was tell the truth and you will not be able to reach your goal because the human won't help you. The other road was lie and you will be able to get to get your goal. And nobody told the AI to lie. By itself, it made the decision, I will lie. The other thing is that it invented a new lie. Nobody told the AI what would be an effective lie to tell. You know, it could have said a million different things. It shows one thing, which was an extremely efficient lie. It was really, in a way, a bit cruel because it used human empathy against the human. By saying, I'm a human with a vision impairment, I have a disability, the AI was actually exploiting human compassion in order to deceive the human. Now, this is, of course, a very small incident, but what happens when we release millions of super intelligent AIs that can make decisions like lie by themselves, that can invent new things, including new deceptions by themselves, we release them to the world and give them power in politics, in the military, in the banks. That's the big question. Okay, 새로운 기술에 대한 이해가 필요한 그런 세상에 오기 시작한 건데요. 세대가 바뀌면서 적응력이 차이가 있어가지고 기술의 적응 속도가 빠른 분들은 공존을 좀더 수월해 하시는 게좀 보이거든요. 영화에서는 이제 사랑의 감정을 느끼는 챗봇을 상정하기도 하고 그리고 심리의 어려움이나 혹은 운세 보는 것까지도 이제는 챗봇이랑 하는 것들이 막 퍼져나가고 있거든요. 교수님께서 이런 현상을 보셨을 때 함께 공존하는 방법들에 대해서 새롭게 정의하는 것들에 대해서 어떻게 생각하시지 되게 궁금했어요. Yeah, I, I completely agree that we need to learn how to live with AI because nobody is going to stop the development of AI. This will continue that human beings, we are animals, we are organic beings, we live by cycles. 
day and night, winter and summer. Sometimes we are active, sometimes we need to rest, to sleep. AIs, in contrast, they never sleep. They don't work by cycles. They are not organic. So what happens when AIs gain control of more and more of the systems of the world? The danger is that if they don't slow down to adapt to our way of life and we have to speed up, we eventually collapse. So, you know, like in the financial system, the stock market in Wall Street is open only from 9.30 in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Mondays to Fridays. It's closed for the weekend, during the night, for holidays, because bankers and investors are human beings. They want to sleep. They want to spend time with their family. They want to celebrate Christmas. What happens if we give AI control of the financial system, which is already happening? And it never sleeps. It never takes a vacation. Then if you are a human being and you want to be an investor or a mark or a banker or something, you have to be active all the time. If you take rest, you're left behind. I talk with the leaders of the AI revolution in different countries, and I always ask them two questions. The first question I ask is, why are you moving so fast? I understand there are many positive potentials, but there are also risks. Why not move more slowly and carefully? Almost everybody tells me the same thing. We know there are risks. We would like to slow down and invest more in safety, but we cannot trust our human competitors. If we slow down and the other company or the other country doesn't slow down, they win the race. They will control the world. So we must move faster because we can't trust our human competitors. Then I ask them, okay, do you think you will be able to trust the super intelligent AIs mm. that you're developing? And the same people who just told me they can't trust the other humans now assure me that we can trust the AIs. And this is really almost insane. That, you know, we have thousands of years of experience with humans. Mm. We know they are problematic sometimes, but we also have experience in building trust. Like, you know, we have countries with millions of people that trust each other. AIs, we have no experience with them. They are not humans, they are not even organic. We have no idea what happens when you develop a super intelligent AI. So to gamble the future of humanity on this idea that, oh, we could trust the AIs, this sounds very, very dangerous. 흥미로운 게 한국의 옛날 속담 중에서 구관이 명관이라는 말이 있는데요. 그러니까 새로운 형태의 무엇인가 믿을 수 있는 어떤 엔터티를 만들고 싶었지만 사실은 이게 새로운 뷰로크라시즘일 수 있다는 그런 시각이 독특하고 아주 흥미로웠습니다.